Hello everybody, and welcome back to Space Engine. Where are we, Titan? Yeah, we're Titan. I do in fact still live, and I do in fact still make these videos, and I do in fact plan on making more of them. This has been in a, uh, a very busy summer, so yeah, Space Engine kind of really slowed down. In fact, my YouTube schedule in general is really slowed down. But this fall, I'm hoping to get back to a more regular upload schedule because that's always well and good, and plus I've started actually making money on 3D printing stuff, so I don't have to work as hard. Still work hard, but I have more time to, like, do videos. Anyways, um, what are we going to do today? Well, we're going to go to places, we're going to talk about stuff, and we're going to have a great old time. Assuming my mic, or this all is recording properly, I hope so. Can never be too sure. Um, right then, let's go to our first location. Apparently this is a very flat planet, as in, like, the terrain is very flat. Um, it's obviously, you know, spheroid. But let's have a look-see. I like flat locales. Let's slow down, enter the atmosphere. Wow. Oh, and let it load now. Kind of freeze. It does that. I'll get a new computer here eventually. Not right now. Come on. Come on, Space Engine. You can do it. There we go. Alright. Um, my. That's quite the, uh, quite the terrain. How high are we? Uh, we are two meters off the ground. Let's see here, I'm like six feet tall, so like a meter and such, so that's pretty close. Wow, it's kind of like Saskatchewan, only with less grass. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Let's see if we can find any monicum of actual terrain. This really is a flat location. Like, you were not kidding. My goodness. More dunes. I, I kind of enjoy that. I like the, uh, the reflections. That's, that's kind of nice. These little dune thingies. Ah, dune. Have, uh, have you guys seen the new dune trailer? I sure have. I'm actually, like, quite interested, uh, because the f the first Dune movie was incredibly hard to follow, because how the book is written, it does not, it's not really conducive for, uh, movies, so, yeah, so I'm kind of interested to see if they can pull it off without too much problems, so, RS5842-1, Dash, oh, I can use this instead. Zero dash zero dash two space B four. Does it exist? Um, it does exist. We can go there. Nice. Let's see what we're looking at here. This is apparently a interesting place. And it's looking like an interesting place. What is that, a river or a lake? Now, I remember last time when I kept using the like the, the menus, or like the information, it kept crashing it. So we're going to try this anyways. Um, it doesn't have a hydrosphere. Atmosphere? Alright, we are looking at a very tenuous atmosphere. And it's actually pretty complex, my goodness. Um, there's carbon dioxide. There's no free oxygen. Um, there's a lot of hydroxyl groups. Or not hydroxyl. Uh, hydrocarbon groups. Nitrogen. There's possibly, um, oh yeah, it's a carbonia. Would be a good place for life to start. So I remember, like, uh, the Yuri Miller experiments where they put a bunch of crap into... Uh, an enclosed glass apparatus, and then sparked it. 
and uh, they, they were trying to simulate Earth's early atmosphere, at least what they thought it was at the time, and they were able to produce tons of interesting organic compounds and uh, amino acids and proteins and stuff. And looking at Earth's atmosphere, how it probably was, there was probably, like, too much, what was like, I think it was carbon dioxide, which would uh, readily destroy the compounds that were produced. But then they were like, if you add in tons of iron oxides, um, yes, hi, Jimmy, then it actually can help produce more. So it's like early Earth was probably, yes, I know, was probably very hospitable for the formation of, like, tholines and stuff, which is kind of cool. RN584 dash was that 3941 3941 aha all right we have a nebula a planter nebula it looks kind of pretty i assume it's blue with a bit of pink around the edge i'm probably wrong it's probably purple but i can't see purple so i wouldn't know and at its heart, we have a white dwarf. So we can probably guess what happened here. And this is possibly what our sun will look like in the future. With shed layers and a white dwarf in the center. It's very pretty. It's very diffuse. It's luminous. I like it. Where? Which galaxy is this? NGC 6548. Interesting. So we're a ways out. I like that. That's a nice gal. Uh, that's a nice nebula. I need more of like people telling me to go to nebulas and stuff because there's a lot of really nice ones out there, and I always appreciate that. All right, RG zero dash one dash zero dash twenty five. Ah, I'm surprised these all worked. Sometimes there's ones that don't work, but these all actually worked. All right, random galaxy. What an odd galaxy. It's fuzzy. It's kind of like a barred spiral, but not quite. It seems to have just a, a really big dust halo. I don't know. It's kind of like... It has kind of a crappy shape, but it's pretty. It's like, it wants to be a barred spiral, but it's still like an elliptical kind of dealy. That's weird. Because it has like defined bars and the beginnings of defined arms there's at least two of them but it's very diffuse so it's, it looks almost like now I'm no astronomer um, I just know a bunch it looks almost like an elliptical galaxy that's undergoing or no it's like an elliptical galaxy that was disturbed by something causing it to take on a barred spiral shape or the or it's a forming barred spiral looking at its color it also doesn't seem to have a whole lot of star formation but let's let's see what kind of stars are here actually no there's white and blue stars i guess there is yeah all right because usually uh, galaxies that are full of mostly red stars have less Ooh, look at that a g7 let's go have less star formation. This is a quite an interesting place. I like it here. We're gonna hang out here for the rest of the episode. Oh, this is a binary. Oh, there's a neutron star companion. Hell yeah. Let's go there. Aw, oh, I love it. What's this? An old or a cold an old a cold aquaria. Boom. What an interesting place with its star and neutron star companion. Hmm. And there's some weather patterns, and ice. Actually, that's not what I, that, that's just like a volcano. Intriguing. I enjoy the rings. I just, I like rings. Planetary rings are nice. More planets should have rings. <laughs> yeah. It could make sense, I guess. Um, yeah. So what's new in the world? Oh, let's go there. Uh, there was Dune. That was fun. I enjoyed the trailer. I'm looking forward to the movie. I need to actually read Dune one of these days. 
I know a lot of it, but I haven't actually read it. Um, so I need to do that. I'll probably do, do it audiobook form because I have a like reading is a real pain in the ass for me because dyslexia is a real pain in the ass for me. Uh, there's moons here with life. Boom. A frigid, airless mini aquaria with life. Let's go. I've also been going through the uh, the Halo games finally. Uh, cause I played the first one like years ago uh, when it was on Xbox One, like the original Xbox, and that I really enjoyed. I love the story, everything about it. And since then, I've I've always been a fan of the Halo universe. I know like all the lore and everything and the history, but I haven't actually played any of the games after one. But one of my friends talked me into getting the Game Pass, like the Microsoft Game Pass, and like playing them, like co-ops. We've been running through them. We just finished Halo 2 yesterday. That was a lot of fun. I love that you can switch back and forth between the graphics, like from the original graphics, the enhanced graphics, because in Halo 2 especially, the original cutscenes were the same as Halo 1, where they were just in-game things, and they looked as you'd expect. But in the enhanced edition, they're like full cinematic, motion captured, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, they're pretty great. So, that's fun. Alright, this is a nice place. I like it here. Ooh, as we crash. So I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe tomorrow or whatever, we might start on Halo 3. It all depends on uh, my schedule and how I'm feeling on day per day, because some days I just can't actually do anything, but other days I can. Like, what was it? The last two days, I had a really bad vertigo moment where I couldn't walk, and then I felt sick the next day. It was a real, real pain. And those just keep happening. Um, pretty sure they're like vestibular migraines, where it's like a migraine that doesn't actually, it's not no headache, but it affects my balance system, because I have chronic vertigo, and it seems to be getting slowly, progressively worse, but I also get these upticks where I just randomly can't walk, or randomly everything's just spinning so badly that I, 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 I get motion sick. So, possibly vestibular migraine. Advil seems to help, so that kind of reinforces the, the migraine theory or hypothesis. Who knows? I'll get it fixed. I suspect something like Meniere's disease or whatever, but... That requires more diagnostics. My doctor just won't do it, and I don't know why. I'm going to get some physiotherapy to help with it, but, like, come on, man. I want to, like, check to see if it isn't, like, I want to know if it's physical or neurological. Like, I, I want to know if it's my inner ear that has a problem or if it's, like, neurological damage from an injury or something. But the other, like, because I remember one time when I was, like, six, I was knocked unconscious by accident by my brother because we were running, and he like put his arms out and I crashed into him and I remember just waking up in the grass so <laughs> I always say it's like that's the, like that could have been a problem I don't know. regardless um, I seem to be figuring stuff out I don't know I still walk with a cane if I'm out and about just to prevent falling but actually there's thing place where I, if I if I know that I'm gonna be walking a lot uh, I bring a cane if I'm just gonna be like going somewhere where I can like sit down or or whatever, then I don't. It's like airsoft. I can do airsoft no problem because I'm usually on my knees or sitting down anyways because I'm a dedicated sniper, but walking around a mall or whatever, I have to I have to bring a cane with me just in case. It's kind of fun because you, you can like poke people or hit people with it. I mean, I don't hit people with it, but if I needed to, I could. It's kind of fun. Uh, all right, let's carry on. Um, what else is new? Oh, yeah, a bunch of Mars missions going out to Mars. I'm looking forward to that. I think the next Ma NASA Mars rover, uh, Perseverance, is actually going to be looking for life, specifically. I'm not sure. I know it's going to be gathering up samples, and I know that ExoMars will be looking for life, but it's not going to launch until the next Mars uh, launch window because it was postponed. And I'm really looking forward to that because we haven't actually sent a mission to Mars that actually just looks for life. Uh, since Viking, everything post-Viking has looked for habitability and geology. Nothing's actually looked for life specifically. And, oh man, the Viking, um, ooh, a K-star with life, I knew it. Uh, the Viking lander uh, results are, they're kind of funny, because the more you read about them, the more frustrating they get. <laughs> 
Because it's like, all right, there were two Viking landers that went to Mars. One landed in Crisi, uh, no, Utopia, and one landed in, yeah, Crisi, I think. Yeah, Crisi and Utopia. Utopia Planitia. And um, what was interesting about them is they carried a bunch of experiments. One of them looked for metabolism. Another one looked for organics. And what they found was both the landers yielded a positive result for metabolism, but they also both showed negative for organics. And that was a real head-scratcher because it showed there was evidence of something metabolizing food, but there were, there were no organics, so what could be doing it? Now, we have recently found organics on Mars, so there's that, but the, um, the life detection positive, it's really, really annoying because you, nobody can really say for sure what it is. Because um, there was some thought that maybe it's organic chemistry in the, or it's something in the soil. Because like how the experiment worked was it, um, it would take soil and it would mix it with a small amount of a nutrient solution from Earth. And the nutrient solution contained a lot of carbon-14. And then uh, sensors would just be operating. And if something broke down the nutrients, it would release the carbon-14, and it would re it would detect a spike in carbon-14, and boom, that's an indication that something's been breaking it down, that's, that's metabolism. And so they're trying to figure out why it was doing this, and they found that maybe it's something like formic uh, in the soil that was causing it, but that doesn't fully explain it, because there might not be enough formic, and it breaks down easily. Um, the best explanation is uh, perchlorates in the soil, because there is known to be uh, perchlorates in the soil on Mars. And they found that if they take soil that contains both formic or per uh, perchlorates, they would break down um, the nutrients and create a positive result. So there's that. And you'd think, oh, okay, well, it's just the, uh, the perchlorates in the soil that were causing the result. But here's where it gets kind of annoying, or interesting, depending on how you take it because the experiments on the Viking landers, they, they stopped producing a positive once the samples were heated above 50 degrees, and they stopped producing a positive when the samples were stored for like two months in the dark. And in experiments back on Earth, you can heat up perchlorate soil like to 100 degrees, and it'll still produce a positive result. But on Mars, for some reason, after it hit 50 degrees, uh, the positive result stopped. So, what does that tell us? That tells us that whatever is causing the positive result in the Viking landers was fragile and heat sensitive, and also perhaps light sensitive. Now, if it was just perchlorate in the soil, that wouldn't be the case, because the, the perchlorate wouldn't stop producing a positive result after being stored in the dark or after being heated above 50 degrees. So some people say that that's evidence that it was biological because there were microbes in the soil eating the food, and then when it heated up above 50 degrees, it killed them. Or when it was stored uh, for over a long time, they died. And there hasn't been much of a follow-up on that. And it's really annoying and frustrating because it's like, yeah, it's... What was that? It's possibly uh, life, or maybe it's uh, chemistry. But the the more you look into it, the more the data the data sets get more frustrating. Because for me, I find that really interesting that it stopped producing a positive result after heated above fifty degrees. Because that that feels like that's biological in origin. That doesn't feel chemical. Uh, some ke some chemistry is um, thermal dependent, but not in that way. Um, there is an idea to send a similar like apparatus to Mars that uses um, oh what's it called like left hand right hand proteins. I forget the actual name like the duality of proteins, and it'll look to see if whatever causes like to see if something gets, you know breaks it down chemically, and then it'll also check. Um, which proteins are being used. Because like, if it only metabolizes left-hand proteins or right-hand proteins, that's biology, that's not chemistry. Because chemistry does not discern between the two, biology does. Like, all life on Earth is, I believe, left-hand? Or, yeah, left. 
I forget what it's called, but it's basically like the protein, like, not polarity, but like how it's or, uh, oriented. And for humans, like, or all life on Earth, it's all left, or it's like all the one, not the other. So if they had a detector that used this system, it would be able to determine between biology and chemistry, because chemistry would not discern between the two, but if it was biological, it would. It would be, it would only use one or the other, not both. So that's kind of cool. Only, only problem with that is they need to go to great lengths to sterilize the lander. Like, the Viking landers were perfectly pristine, um, because how they, how they operated them was they built them and then put them in autoclaves at, like, 200 degrees for, like, five days. So they were 100% sterile. There was no contamination on board. But we can't do that with uh, modern spacecraft because they're delicate. Like, we can't autoclave the Mars rovers because they're too delicate to autoclave. The parts would break and melt and burn and just form. So they're sterilized, like, by hand, basically, uh, in a clean rooms and put together. And then the rovers themselves have added protection, like filters, to make sure that nothing can get out of them if there is life on board. But the Mars rovers aren't 100% sterile. Like, there's, there's going to be some contamination in them because they can't fully clean them and get them guaranteed clean. There is some thought about using, like, CO2. Like, like you basically like deposit dry ice onto a surface, and then as it evaporates, it cleans away oils, cleans away dirt, and kills everything. So that's a possibility, but who knows? I'm I'm more on the camp of we need to build, very, like, a very simple... Um, analog kind of system that can be autoclaved and give it a bunch of basic life detecting um, experiments and then send it off. But that's me. I'm not in control of a major space company. I do have a mild space program, but my current goals are just the mesosphere, so I'm nowhere near Mars. But anyways, uh, we're going to leave it off there. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll try to do more videos faster. Uh, I'm doing some more Gmod because people have been asking about that. And it's like, sure, why not? I can do that. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any ideas on what to send or what, what me to talk about or go to, comment below. Space.